Hey there, this is Nick from Income Days. Welcome to this video tutorial, jumping into QuickBooks Online today. And specifically, we're gonna talk about the new user interface of QuickBooks in a really specific, annoying, kind of confusing, confusing section that I've been getting a lot of questions about. And that is adding an account to your chart of accounts through the new QuickBooks Online interface. So of course, QuickBooks Online is changing things all the time, right? They're making improvements. That means that some of our videos get out of date pretty quick, right? So one of the key functionality that we had demonstrated in the past was adding accounts and that dialogue has completely changed and it's led to a ton of questions so i want to address those with you today so i'm going to bounce over to my chart of accounts real quick and um, just show you what i'm talking about if i click the new button here you see um, this whole dialogue is, is kind of brand new now what it used to be is if I, and it still exists, the old dialogue. So if I were to add an account just like live, meaning I want to input a journal entry and I don't have that account yet, if I go to new account, click new, it's gonna bring me to the old dialogue where I indicate the account type, the detail type, and I indicate if it's a sub account. Now I will say that the sub account part is where we're getting confused, okay? So this is the old dialogue that still exists if you're creating while you're working, but most of the time we're gonna be creating from our chart of accounts, which I have here. Okay, so let's talk through this new dialogue and let's talk through some of the confusing aspects and make sure we understand exactly how we can continue on. You can still, of course, import your chart of accounts. And that's always a good place to start if you are just getting going with a new set of books or you're kind of adjusting the way you do things. We have our ultimate chart of accounts designed for rental property investors. You can download that for free at IncomeDigs.com. That's a good starting point. And then you kind of mold it from there. You can still import. But if you're going to be adding one on one or one by one, this is how it would happen. So we have this dialogue here to the right. The first thing we have to do is identify the account type and then everything else kind of starts to turn on. OK, so let's say we wanted to add an asset, you know, inventory or fixed asset buildings we own, buildings we're working on. Click that button. And one interesting thing that I really like is it gives me this um, this sample, this preview of how the account that I add will look. Okay, so as I start typing, it'll show up there. And the area where we get most confused is how do we differentiate a sub account versus an account we just wanna create off the bat. So if I just wanna create an asset, maybe it's like notes receivable, and I don't want it to be under any sub accounts, all I need to do is identify where that would live. And that's probably under other current assets. So in the past, we wouldn't have, have said that this is a sub account, but in this style, in this dialogue, pretty much everything's a sub account of something and the, it might be a sub account of just the account type itself. Okay. So if I want to do like notes receivable, um, I can do other current assets, uh, there. I do need to pick some kind of type. Okay. And it'll show up right there. I, it looks like I have one of those already, but um, you get the point. So where we're getting mostly confused is how do we, you know, when one is in a sub account, where do we put it? If it's a sub account, it's relatively straightforward. So let's say that I wanted to do a sub account, an expense. So I have my cost of goods sold, maybe under buying costs, I want to add like um, title costs for whatever reason. Okay. So if that's the case, I can just pull up my buying costs. It's going to pre-populate everything and then my account name is going to be uh, title costs and you can see that it shows up there so to create as a sub account is pretty easy this is like save account under you would indicate the parent account of it but again if it's a parent itself meaning it doesn't have a parent account when we go to save under we're just going to put it under whatever the main one is so like let's say i have real estate short-term real estate maybe I can save it all under fixed assets, all right? And that's like one of the most common questions I'm getting is like, okay, I wanna add an account. I understand how to add it. If it's a sub account of something, I just find the account that it's a sub account of. What if it isn't a sub account of anything? And it's kind of weird. They don't make that easy. Uh, you would just indicate here that it's just gonna be under the fixed asset section of itself, okay? So hopefully that helps to clarify things. This dialogue is certainly new, a little bit confusing, especially because the other one was there for so long, but ultimately I do actually like it. I like the preview that happens at the bottom here, and I like the idea that um, we can kind of see what we're doing as we work, all right? So um, 
If you have any questions about this, feel free to throw them in the comments and we'll answer them there. Also check out all the free resources we have available at IncomeDigs.com. Don't forget about our end-to-end -end course, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. So if you are in the industry, if you flip houses, if you have rental properties, if you do wholesaling and you're interested in getting your QuickBooks in order, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp is the way to do that. Check that out on our website as well. And until next time, I will see you on the next video.